As someone who's reviewed over 160 monitors and someone who's a competitive gamer, I've found that most 4K monitors are somewhat lackluster, specifically when it comes to actual competitive gaming. This Asus monitor has potentially finally changed my mind. Now the monitor in question is the Asus ROG Strix XG27UQ. It's a 4K 144Hz monitor, has a bunch of cool stuff that are built in, uh, which we're going to talk about in this review, but is also very expensive at around £800 in the UK and around $800 in the US. If you're interested in purchasing it, the locally link in the description below will take you to your localized Amazon store. And also down there, you'll find some alternatives, including the uh, Acer Predator X27 that I previously reviewed and the Nitro, which I would say is one of its direct competitors. Also down there, you'll find a link to my Instagram. So I'd very much appreciate to follow if you use that social media platform and a shameless plug to Totally EV. If you're interested in all electric or hybrid uh, news or reviews, do check out my website and also YouTube channel. Your support would be great appreciated. So let's kick off the review and talk about specs and the reason this is so important more than any other monitor is because it's got a few cool features built in. Now this is a 4k monitor so that's 3840 times 2160 and it runs at 144 Hertz using a singular display port input. Now the reason why this is so important is because in the past monitors that would have to run at 4k 144 Hertz and have no chroma subsampling which is essentially kind of a loss of vibrancy or color data then you'd have to run on two display port inputs simultaneously into the monitor and therefore meaning if you're running it's some crazy PC setup that can run a multi 4k monitor setup it would hinder your ability to do that in this case, you can run it on a singular display port input without any loss of data. The only caveat to this is the fact that you need an RTX 20 series card or above or an AMD RX 5700 series card or above in order to benefit from DSC, which is display screen compression, uh, stream compression, sorry. And you can find out more information about that um, down below uh, in case you're interested. Aside from that, it's a 27 inch 10 bit IPS panel. Again, a little bit different from some of its competitors that run 8 bit or 8 bit plus FRC, turning it into a 10 bit panel. This is a native 10 bit panel. And yes, yet again, you can run it via that singular display port input as long as you've got the right graphics card and set up so therefore you color graders or video editors will actually be pretty impressed about that although most gamers won't care less about the 8-bit 10-bit difference I could be wrong let me know in the comments below if you care about 10-bit um, in comparison to 8-bit if you are a gamer now moving on it is also a display HDR 400 certified monitor we'll touch upon its performance in its HDR capabilities but it does accept an HDR signal which might be um, quite important for console gamers and it also has Nvidia G-Sync the G-Sync module built in so therefore you can lock your frames if you've got the appropriate graphics card again so this is great to see um, to see it built in uh, on this monitor now in terms of inputs it's got two display port 1.4 inputs and two HDMI 2.0 inputs it's also got um, a headphone jack and two USB ports as well uh, that can be accessed from underneath the monitor now past the specs let's talk about the build quality and design now first off the major sticking point over here for me is that the monitor doesn't doesn't have a three side borderless design it's actually got pretty chunky bezels most people might not care about that specifically for someone like myself who still has a monitor with pretty chunky bezels but in this day and age I would have expected it to be a little bit more well low profile the same could be said about its actual width it's, it's actually quite a chunky uh, monitor in terms of its thickness sorry and in comparison to modern monitors and when I say modern I say in the last decade uh, this monitor is actually one of the chunkier models I have tested that are non-curved and also a non-ultra wide so it's pretty surprising to see this flat 27 inch monitor to be pretty chunky. In terms of its stand it is an odd triangular shape I've seen this before from Asus ROG the ROG line um, but in my case it does fit on my IKEA Freddy desk but you maybe want to check in case if it doesn't fit given its kind of odd ergonomic. In terms of the uh, lighting scenario that you've got you've got some RGB lights at the back of the monitor which provide a little bit of extra 
um, pizzazz, but truthfully are not going to be really useful on like, like let's say Philips Hue um, monitors or even TVs. And there's also a pretty bright LED which shines at the bottom of the monitor, almost kind of like a UFO spaceship. Um, in, in this case, the uh, red LED can be disabled altogether if you don't like it. As for the stand itself, it's actually pretty sturdy and provides all the adjustments that you're going to need. Therefore, you can swivel it, rotate, pivot it and tilt it uh, to your heart's content and it does stay pretty sturdy on your desk. So you're not going to have any issues over here and it's great to see that Asus have integrated well. You kind of expect it for an £800, $800 monitor, but the stand is very sturdy and I've got no complaints whatsoever. If you don't like it stand, you can always replace it with a Visa compatible stand, specifically if you're going to use it on, let's say, multi-monitor setup. And now we move on to the OST, which can be accessed through a joystick found at the back of the monitor. Now, you can see over here at the top, you've got the gaming section. Now, we're going to expand on this in the gaming section of this uh, review. However, you can see Overdrive, Adaptive Sync, which I've got disabled at the moment, ELMB, Game Plus, Game Visual, which I find quite interesting to put it as Game Visual because you've got different uh, color modes to choose from including the sRGB mode um, and you've got Shadow Boost as well. Moving on from there we've got Image, you can see brightness I've got it at zero, that's just for the camera to pick it up. HDR will only be enabled if you've got an HDR signal or indeed if you've got it uh, enabled through uh, Windows. Uh, dynamic Dimming and ASCR we're going to touch upon in the image quality section and then you've got a blue light filter as well. In the color mode uh, you've then got the color temperatures which you can see I've got it on uh, user mode right now. Uh, of course you can uh, tailor it to your liking with the RGB values uh, so that's just completely uh, subjective. In terms of input select you can see display ports uh, is selected and that's the one that I'm currently using. In terms of the lighting effects this is the Aura Sync uh, that you can also enable via uh, the bundle software and Aura RGB if you don't want to use a software and you don't have any other um, ROG, um, Asus ROG type of gear uh, then you can just use the normal RGB lights and the light in motion is to disable the light which is featured underneath the monitor. It's also nice to see that you can disable the power indicator, it's a very small LED found at the bottom right of the monitor so that can be entirely disabled and you can also look at the information in terms of what resolution you're running just in case you have an odd setting then you can quickly check into what the actual monitor is picking up. Now with the OSD section out of the way let's talk about the image quality and here this monitor was actually pretty spectacular. In its sRGB mode uh, that was set through the OSD, it hits 97.3% of the sRGB gamut coverage and 104% uh, of the sRGB gamut volume, which is pretty much bang on in terms of the um, sRGB values. In terms of colors, it actually has an average delta of 1.01 and a maximum of 2.72. What does that mean in layman's terms? It just means that the monitor is pretty accurate when it comes to its color reproduction and for a gaming monitor it's pretty supremely impressive. Specifically again compared to some of its competitors this monitor really does stand out in terms of its color accuracy and therefore will be very much suitable for color graders or video editors um, that are out there who are looking for a monitor that's very uh, color accurate then this monitor will tick that box. The only thing to be mindful about is its contrast ratio. No matter in which mode I set it in, I had a contrast ratio of between 600 to 750 to one, which is pretty low for an IPS panel. I'm not really sure what was going on over here or why my monitor just wasn't getting a higher contrast ratio, which I've seen other reviewers get. Um, I am in contact with Asus about this and I'm gonna look to see what their comment is about it so that they can potentially input it. It's ironic because the last Asus monitor I reviewed also had a similar problem and that was actually a fault with its sRGB mode. And yes, before you say, did you test it in outside of its sRGB mode? Yes, I did. And again, it didn't get anywhere near the 1100 or more contrast ratio that I was expecting from this IPS panel. As for brightness, the monitor will hit around 170 nits in its sRGB mode. And unfortunately, the brightness cannot be tailored. 
If you do take it off its sRGB mode, however, I got around 440 to 450 nits in, in SDR, and in terms of its lowest brightness, it gets to 58 nits, and while if you were to enable ELMB mode, which limits brightness, it will cap it to around 177 nits. Now, what I really did find interesting is that the monitor's brightness uniformity was actually pretty impressive, and therefore, backlight bleed was kept to a minimum. It's, again, pretty impressive in comparison to its competitors, and furthermore, given this monitor doesn't have full array local dimming, unlike the more expensive Asus or the more expensive Acer monitor, this monitor was, again, very impressive given that it doesn't have those features and, again, is uh, very much comparable to some other monitors on the market and yet is, well, completely trounces them in this department. Now, while image quality is very much important, I was very much intrigued to see how this monitor would perform when it comes to gaming. First off, I tested it in terms of its uh, NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility, and here it ran flawlessly on the NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA Pendulum demo. Now, taking out of that, it was quite interesting to see it running with HDR simultaneously running at 4K 144 hertz, and also G-Sync, all running on um, Destiny 2. So this is pretty impressive yet again, given the fact that it's running a singular DisplayPort cable, again, due to potentially the DSC compatibility and how this actually interacts with the GPU and the monitor in a G-Sync module. It's just really impressive to see that I could run this kind of setup as I said, again, G-Sync HDR at 4K and 144 Hz, all via one singular DisplayPort cable, kind of blew my mind. Now, in terms of its actual HDR performance, however, that's not as mind-blowing. Given the fact this monitor is limited to around 440 to 450 nits, the display HDR certification, yes, is HDR 400, but HDR 400 is somewhat laughable. Truthfully, I actually preferred using the monitor in non-HDR mode, but if you're a console gamer, you might find yourself to like its HDR compatibility because you can run HDR10 content on it, so therefore if you have an Xbox or PlayStation. But in my case as a PC gamer, I found it to be pretty useless, and therefore when it came to playing Destiny 2, I actually preferred playing Destiny 2 without HDR uh, enabled altogether. And now we get on to competitive gaming, the thing which really took me by surprise with this monitor, as I mentioned at the beginning of this review. And that's purely because this monitor is spectacularly good in its input lag. There was pretty much no input lag that I noticed. It very much competed with my Acer XF270HUA, which is a fantastic low input lag monitor. It's a 1440p, 144Hz monitor, and I had the same experience with this Asus monitor, which isn't the same thing I could say about any 4K monitor I've pretty much ever tested. While there are some TN 4K panels out there, they look absolutely atrocious in terms of their colors, at which point you want to rip out your eyeballs and not look at your monitor. In this case, its IPS panel was, well, mind-blowing to see great color accuracy and great colors that were popping, despite its somewhat low contrast ratio, and an incredibly low input lag. What I'm trying to say over here is this is pretty much a one-of-a-kind monitor that I haven't come across before, and it really left me kind of jaw-dropped. Now, while its input lag was extremely impressive, its response time wasn't as impressive. While it was still pretty good, you did have to you do have to remember that the overdrive setting is very much linked to the response time of the monitor. Therefore, in its highest overdrive setting on a game like Counter-Strike, which looks like a potato, I noticed quite a lot of um, inverse ghosting, at which point I found it was a little bit unplayable. However, dial it down one notch or even two notches and you find that the monitor's response time is still pretty much acceptable for competitive gaming and yet the overshoot ghosting is, well, minimal, not reduced entirely because if you play a game like Destiny 2 or let's say Valorant or something like that, then you'll find that the inverse ghosting is still a little bit present on the higher levels and therefore means you'll have to dial it down a few notches extra as well. But if you're playing games like, let's say, like Destiny 2, you won't care all that much about the overall response, uh, rus responsiveness of the monitor because even in its level zero mode, it is still very impressive in terms of how responsive this monitor is. What I'm trying to say over here, in a nutshell, is that this monitor is very much suited for competitive gaming. While it is not the most responsive panel out there, it is among the best 
4K monitors have tested when it comes to competitive gaming and that really all leads itself to how good its input lag is and I can't stress this enough I've said it so many times throughout my videos or even in comments a lot of people talk about marketing claims in terms of response time but they often forget that actual input lag is actually one of the most important factors in terms of the overall feel that you get of a monitor specifically when it comes to well a higher refresh rate monitor and finally I should also mention ELMB mode now ELMB mode is meant for basically reducing motion blur and um, giving you a slightly better experience experience specifically when it comes to um, darker games. The problem is here is that it locks the overdrive to the maximum overdrive setting and if you're paying attention then you'll know that the maximum overdrive setting is truly not recommended and therefore ELMB mode is pretty much redundant because I can't see anyone realistically using ELMB mode and being happy with the amount of inverse ghosting that is being induced by your eyes and might mean that a lot of things become well unplayable maybe for movie watching but even then you'll potentially see let's say if you're watching Batman you might see a bit of um, inverse ghosting appearing in darker scenes at which point why would you use ELMB mode altogether given that it also locks the brightness to around 170 nits. And this all leads me on to my verdict. What do I make about this Asus monitor? Well, truthfully, I wasn't expecting to come into this review and sing a lot of praises about it, but it's actually got me pretty shell-shocked and impressed as to how this 4K monitor or even 4K monitors can perform. It's got really low input lag, which makes it actually a viable solution for competitive gamers. Even if you're not running 4K, you can you know, run it to, let's say, 1080p if you wanted to. It's furthermore got 144 hertz that runs over a singular display port input and that is if you've got the right um, graphics card it has nvidia g-sync for more casual gamers it's also got hdr and while it's not impressive it is somewhat of an option for people who are either watching let's say blu-ray films directly from their monitor or let's say have a console as well or are a console gamer themselves and in terms of its image quality, it's pinpoint accurate in terms of its sRGB color um, gamut and in terms of its um, color accuracy. And furthermore, it's just generally really impressive in terms of its backlight bleed, therefore keeping backlight bleed to a minimum. It's again somewhat of a rarity in a 4K panel, furthermore in an IPS panel. So the major sticking point over here that you should consider that it's not the most um, ultra low responsive monitor out there on the market. Some 1440p monitors out there or even some 4K TN panels will be a little bit more responsive but there'll be a lot of sacrifices bit from resolution to the actual um, color of the screen and how the um, panel performs. And furthermore, its HDR performance is a lackluster. It doesn't also support full array local dimming, unlike its more, well, far more expensive uh, Asus uh, alternative or even Acer alternative. So those things uh, might be worth considering if you play a lot of HDR content. But aside from that, this monitor is the almost a perfect 4K gaming monitor. And as a result, gets my best buy award, the best award that I could award to any sort of product. Now, let me know in the comments below what you make of this monitor. If you own it, we're thinking about it, I'd be very much intrigued to hear your thoughts. Is this the ultimate gaming monitor for you guys? I'll be, well, intrigued to, to see what you think. Now, if you like this type of video and you want to see more honest, unbiased content, do like and subscribe. Um, I very much appreciate that. And of course, favorite and share if you want to help the channel grow. All right, guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye-bye.